Hello, and welcome to KDAB News, the monthly update for professionals working with Qt, C++, and 3D technologies. I'm Robert Brock, and in this edition we have How Does a Remote Company Work? with Kala Dahammer, KD Doc Widgets for Qt 6, Tool of the Month, Announcements, Resources, and a little bonus on the end. At the end of the year, we want to talk about something that probably has affected most, if not all of you, distributed work. While working from home or a distributed office has been a new challenge in many industries, even for many in the software industry, KDAB was built this way from the start. Founded in 1999, it has become a successful company with nearly 100 people working in 19 countries on five continents. How is that possible? I'd like to talk with our founder and CEO, Kala Dalheimer to share some critical success factors for remote collaboration. Hi, Kala. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you, Robert? Not bad, thank you. As I said in the introduction, you started KDAB as a distributed company by design. Why was this? It was for a couple of reasons. First of all, I live quite far out in the sticks uh, on an isolated farm in the forest in Sweden. And obviously, I realized that I would not have a lot of hiring opportunity in that area. Um, so if, if it was uh, unlikely that people would come to me, I would have to get work to the people I wanted to work with. And then the other bit was that it was never my intention to run a large company or, or manage a lot of people. So I wanted to work with a, uh, with people I knew from the KDE project back then, for example. So I wanted to work with um, uh, self-motivated people that I don't actually need to watch whether they do any work or not. So I took those where I could find them, no matter where they were. Oh, so a bit like fishing in an ocean instead of a pond. What would you say from your experience are the most critical aspects for successful remote collaboration? Well, it's the usual three things. It's people, it's processes, and tools. Uh, if we start with the with the tools, because that's obviously uh, the easiest thing to to talk about. Well, people need to have uh, the right tools for collaborative software development, and of course, that's not a problem anymore these days. We have all distributed version control. Uh, we've had that for many years now. Um, we have wikis, uh, we have obviously we have email and instant messaging and all that. And we've had all that for a good long while now. So the tools are all there. You just need to make them available to people. So that's something that, that should never fail. So whenever we have a new hire, we make sure that they have access to their accounts and all the online communication tools from day one, from our one really, so that they don't waste their first week uh, just waiting to get a, an, an account assigned. And then obviously processes, if you can't just quickly pop into somebody else's office uh, and you don't accidentally meet at the water cooler, then uh, you need to have some processes in place uh, of how you collaborate so that you don't um, override each other's changes um, or get in the way of each other. This can be a lot more lightweight than it initially may sound. Um, it's really about people communicating frequently. And for that, uh, we use, for anything transient, we use instant messaging because it's just so fast. And anything that needs to stay longer, we use email or the wiki. And then finally, uh, as always, the most important thing is people. It takes a certain kind of person uh, to be able to work uh, both efficiently and effectively uh, remotely. Um, obviously, as an employer, uh, you want it needs staff uh, that will not only work when supervised, but that have their own motivation in, in their work. Um, so because you won't be standing behind their back or pop into the rooms to see whether they're actually turning the screwdriver, um, they will they will be completely unsupervised always. Uh, so while obviously after a while you see whether any results are coming out of 
uh, people's work, uh, you, you might have lost a lot of time by then. So it really needs people who will work because they're interested in the work. And that's, of course, that's, that's always the case with software developers. And, um, and, but even uh, among highly motivated software developers, to work from home all the time uh, takes a certain kind of personality. Uh, we've had some members in, on our staff uh, throughout the years who, while being excellent software developers, could just not cope well with the physical isolation. Um, especially those uh, who were singles, uh, they were just sitting at home, not going to an office, uh, not meeting people at all during the day. And then if you maybe don't have a large uh, circle of friends in the evening either, then you might actually be quite isolated by not going to an office. And some people prefer that because they don't like being around people. And for other people, that's just terrible and it won't work in the long run. Several great points there to make sure you get the right ingredients. I assume that after two years of the COVID pandemic, there are only a few companies that haven't established some kind of remote infrastructure by now, and that people have probably gotten used to working from home at least some days of the week. Is that enough? Or would, what would be your recommendation to company leaders on how to make it a default work environment? I'm not even sure it can be made a default environment for everybody. Um, as, as I said, there are just people have different personalities and that there are personalities who will never thrive in a work from home environment. So um, right now, obviously, obviously it's a necessity or, or a, a government mandate in many countries to do so. And then you just need to abide by that and make the best of it. But I don't think this will, I don't think we will end up in a situation where all office workers will work from home. Um, however, what I can very well see is that there will be more um, mixed location, like work some days from an office, work some days at home. And that's, for example, what the KDAP staff who live near one of our five offices have had for a long time. They were always uh, allowed to work from home, even though they live next to the office um, and they, they went to the office or not, depending on whatever they chose for the day. And I think this greater flexibility in where you actually do your work from, uh, that is probably something that is here to stay. But then again, also, you need to have the space and the quiet at home. Um, if, like right now in so many places, uh, schools and kindergartens are closed and you have your three-year-old screaming around you, then it's unlikely that you're going to get a lot of work done. And if you're sharing an apartment with three flatmates and you all fight for the same kitchen table, which is the only table you can prop your laptop up on, then you're also not going to get a whole lot of work done. So your home situation really must also be conducive to uh, to doing actual concentrated work. And I mean, in our line of business, like in so many others, it takes a lot of concentration to actually get anything done with a reasonable quality. <laughs> Too true, especially during the school holidays. Thank you, Carlo. That was very interesting. Have a nice Christmas. Thank you, Robert. And same to you. Enjoy the holidays. If you'd like to read a bit more from Color, I recommend a white paper about dodging disruption with software. How to prevent commoditization? Links below. KD Dock Widgets is a development framework for custom tailored docking systems in Qt to use when you need advanced docking that is not supported by Q Dock Widgets. The latest version, 1.5.0, isn't adding many new features as the product is maturing and there were not many bugs that needed to be fixed. In this update, KD Doc Widget's co-instability with Qt 6 is improved from that in earlier versions. Additionally, support for all versions of Qt that are older than 5.15 are no longer available. 1.5.0 also comes with support for creating a non-detachable central widget via the Main window option underscore has central widget config option. Check it out on GitHub via the link below. 
Tool of the Month is KDE Syntax Highlighting Engine, which is used for coloring of code and other types of text. It's meant as a building block for text editors as well as for simple highlighted text rendering, like HTML. Supporting both integration with a custom editor, as well as a ready-to-use QSyntax Highlighter subclass. Besides a C++ API, a QML API is also provided. It is useful because it has support for coloration of 333 different types of text files. There are also no runtime dependencies on other KDE libraries. It is used by Qt Creator itself, among others, and in KDAB, we've also used it in the Gamma Ray code editor. You can find out more information on GitHub. By now, we all know that event dates are volatile. But if all goes as planned, here are two dates you should keep in mind for 2022. First, Embedded World, which was planned for the middle of March, has been postponed to the 21st and 23rd of June 2022. We'll keep you posted about it in the upcoming editions. And second, mark your calendars for the 13th to the 15th of June. KDAB and main sponsor Qt Company invite you to meet in Berlin, finally. The event has been postponed from the end of September this year, so the program will largely look the same, but topics might be updated. So watch out for updates and ticket sales opening in the middle of January. Last but not least, some resource tips. The talks of the latest Qt World Summit and Squish Days have been released. If you have missed the event or want to watch some talks again, go check out the links below. Thank you for watching, stay safe, and feel free to share any feedback or questions below the video. And now for a couple of bloopers from the past year. I'll see you next time. Hello, my name is David Faure, and I work, at, uh, I work for KDAB. And what we do at KDAB is that we don't sleep, and this is why I have very baggy eyes. So come and join us, it's so much fun. <laughs> Hello, my name is David Faure, and I'm a CMake and consultant. <laughs> I'm trying. Okay. You'll find a complete list of this take not being very good in the links below. Board up. AC off. Yeah. Screen. <laughs> Screencast on.